Hello, sports fans. Welcome to the Oklahoma Sports Report. I'm Rick Heath. With me, Mark Rogers. And we're at the garage on Main Street in Norman. Great place, great burgers, and beers, and drinks, and all the rest of it here at the garage. A great place to watch sporting events, uh, favorite sporting events. And I'm sure there were some people that watched that sporting event on Saturday that were not very happy here, Mark. Yeah, it was not the uh, desired result with uh, Oklahoma and Kansas. but. The Sooners have not had that many undefeated seasons in the history of the program. A lot of one-loss years where they've come back to win a national championship. And Kansas has been involved in some of those seasons. So it was not the greatest performance, but I think Oklahoma can bounce back from that. And I think they will this week. Well, And that's, that's what we'll be talking about. We'll be talking with Kale Gundy here in a little bit about that. But uh, you did mention last week that you thought OU would stumble in one of these two away games, either Kansas or at OSU. So I give you props on that. Well, it's a two-week trend. They didn't play well against Central Florida. They didn't play well against Kansas last week. The Bedlam game may be a little bit different. I think the matchups favor OU more against Oklahoma State than they did against Kansas. Uh, but they're going to have to go out and play well, or this streak will go to three if not playing great. Yeah, well, and you don't, you know, you don't want to be the, the last OU team that loses a Bedlam matchup for the foreseeable future because this could be the last Bedlam matchup in the foreseeable future. Yeah, it'll be a while before these teams play again. And uh, Oklahoma State's playing great. They're playing as well as anybody in the country. They've won three games as an underdog and then won last week in a spot where you'd think they might not play as well at home with the Bedlam rivalry coming up. And so Oklahoma State is about a running game and they're playing well on defense. And what, what a turnaround. Uh, OU was basking in the glow of winning after OU Texas and OSU was, you know, trying to re you know, kind of resurface their season. And now OSU's the one on a high and OU coming off a, a loss. So we'll talk about the last Bedlam matchup uh, coming up here in just a moment from the garage. And joining us then will be Kale Gundy. We'll be right back. Let us help you get on your journey to feeling better and living a more healthy life. Dr. Gumman at Harmony Healing Center is dedicated to providing personalized care to each of his patients internationally trained and nationally recognized with over 24 years of practice dr guman is the highest recommended acupuncturist in oklahoma call and schedule your appointment today oh man dude i really wish i could make that um it's national no pants day and that'd be kind of inappropriate we actually just had gas station sushi and you just don't want to chance that we're going to be running tornado drills like tornado drills all day I have tickets to see Kenny Rogers. He's what? Tornado drill, tornado drill. Your friends are tired of coming up with excuses. Two Fellows Moving Company, saving friendships since 1996. Wonderful spirits distilled out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Great line of spirits. They have Wander Folk Gin, Wander Folk uh, Vodka, and Old Moses uh, Bourbon. All of these are quality products. Uh, and they're distilled right here in Oklahoma. So support Oklahoma business. Ask your favorite restaurant or bar to carry Wander Folk Spirit. Let us help you get on your journey to feeling better and living a more healthy life. Dr. Gumman at Harmony Healing Center is dedicated to providing personalized care to each of his patients. Internationally trained and nationally recognized, with over 24 years of practice, Dr. Guman is the highest recommended acupuncturist in Oklahoma. Call and schedule your appointment today. Hi friends. Did you know that over 80 million men and women suffer from hair loss? Well, now there's help. Dr. Victoria Johnson and her staff at Laser Light Skin Clinic are introducing a revolutionary laser hair loss treatment called Alma Ted. Alma Ted uses a proprietary laser that will help stop hair loss and promote growth. For more information, give Dr. Victoria Johnson and her staff at Laser Light a call and stop hair loss today. You are the most beautiful creation under the sun. You are going to make Table 14 so happy. And you, you are being taken away. All right. At Neighborhood Jam, you deserve breakfast as beautiful as you. So start the day right with scratch made favorites, morning or midday, every day. Treat yourself to Neighborhood Jam. You're going to taste just as good tomorrow. Oh man, dude, I really wish I could make that. Um, it's National No Pants Day, and 
That'd be kind of inappropriate. We actually just had gas station sushi, and you just don't want to chance that. We're going to be running tornado drills, like tornado drills all day. I have tickets to see Kenny Rogers. He's what? Tornado drill, tornado drill. Your friends are tired of coming up with excuses. Two Fellows Moving Company, saving friendships since 1996. Wonder Folk Spirits distilled out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Great line of spirits. They have Wonder Folk Gin, Wonder Folk uh, Vodka, and Old Moses uh, Bourbon. All of these are quality products, uh, and they're distilled right here in Oklahoma. So support Oklahoma business. Ask your favorite restaurant or bar to carry Wonder Folk Spirits. And welcome back, Oklahoma Sports Report. Rick Keith, Mark Rogers, and joining us now, Kale Gundy. Kale, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. You bet. Um, so I want to get your your input on what happened last Saturday, OU Kansas. Um, a game, gosh, it was just so different than what uh, we'd seen before. Well, we saw a OU football team turn into a running game, um, and and really abandon the passing game, which is the strength of their. Their football team, um, strength, especially on the offensive side. I mean, their best player is Dylan Gabriel, and um, you know I think the receivers have played really, really well this year, and they kind of banded it. At. Now, I don't think the weather was uh, too tough for them to have to do that, but they felt like that they could just go out there and pretty much run it for the most part, 85, 90 percent of the times, and have the defense step up and make plays enough to win the game, and they they couldn't do it. Mark. Well, yeah, I, I think they could have executed better on offense and probably were a little conservative, especially I, I think the final drive of the game. You know that Kansas is expecting the run. Could you maybe throw a pass uh, in one of those two or three plays, second or third down? They didn't do it. And, uh, you know, it, it was a tight game. Could have gone back and forth either way. A couple of plays difference would, you know, Oklahoma just didn't get it done. Well, you know, and I thought Jeff Levy had one of his uh, – not a very good day calling plays. You know, I just, you know, he went, as you said, he took the ball out of his playmaker's hands. Yeah. Uh, Dylan Gabriel only threw the ball 19 times. Um, you know, and they were running the ball in the late third quarter, early fourth quarter uh, with Tawi Walker, and it looked like they were taking momentum. And then all of a sudden he got hurt and they couldn't regenerate. You know, a lot of that's going to be on the offensive line. You know, I mean, they were doing what they needed to do there well, for that, a while. That, that off, that, that's how you want to run the ball. That's what you want in a game, but you also need five or seven or eight passes that you've thrown that you've connected for 100, 125, 130 yards and a couple touchdowns. That's the idea offense, but they just didn't push the ball down the field. They're not stretching. They haven't stretched the field the last two games. I think you have to give Kansas some credit, though, because statistically they're not no, good against the pass. No, you don't. They're not good against the run. <laughs> I mean, teams have had a lot of success against them. Texas ran up a bunch of points. Oklahoma State did the same thing. But on that day at home against a really good team, Kansas came out and forced OU into a game that they're not comfortable with. They, Oklahoma ran the ball 50 times, and they threw it 19 times, and Kansas was able to do that to force Oklahoma into those, that position. So the opponent deserves credit at some point. I, I, they do to a small bit. You know, to, I'm, I'm from the school of I'm going to run off, off tackle. You know, Texas is saying the same things about, about the Oklahoma game, yeah. is that we're better. You know, and we, we just didn't play our best game. I mean, I think Oklahoma can say that about Kansas. If they play nine times or ten times, OU wins seven. Uh, but Kansas isn't a bad team. They're not. And, and, and speaking of a team on the rise, we talked about it earlier, um, Mike Gundy, your brother, has got OSU moving in the direction he wanted all year, but now it's got a lot of momentum behind it with the victory against Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah Mark and I talked about it earlier today and this weekend. Um, you know, you go back and look at statistically the Big 12 Conference and, and uh, you know, offense and defense and, and, and total yards and scoring and passing and rushing and, and defending as well. Um, Oklahoma State's number one in the, the offense or, or in the Big 12 Conference in the last in five games in conference play. Not, not non-conference, but the last five games, uh, they're trending like number one and number two in all offensive categories. And they are playing well. But I do think this, this is going to be a different matchup. I think the last two weeks OU played a team that was able to run the ball and have some success because they do a lot of formationally. Uh, they motion, they shift, they try to get you unbalanced, and they also had quarterbacks that can run a little bit. 
That's not what Oklahoma State does. Oklahoma State just goes back there and hands it off and lets the big guy go downhill. So it'll be interesting. But, um, you know, OSU got after Cincinnati. In this past week, Cincinnati's the number one rush defense in the, in the Big 12 Conference. I would say this. Has everybody seen Ollie Gordon on film? So trying to stop him and then stopping him are two different things. So, Especially with Danny Stutzman a little bit banged up. Right. Um, OU's defense, uh, I think Gentry Williams is also a, a guy that they will miss a lot if he doesn't play. But uh, Ollie Gordon has proven to be, I mean, really. Just another you know, back. He's the best running back in the country right now. Yeah, he is. There's nobody better. He's playing well, really well. Well, he's playing as well as anybody. I mean, he got 200 and what, 70 something yards yeah, against right, back to back. The, stout, the stout Cincinnati defense that we saw OU really having trouble running. West against. Virginia had a top 20 defense against the run, and they were playing at home. And he ran for 270 against that team. So he's he's going to be a challenge to stop. Well, it's going to be a challenge. And, you know, the question is, is OU up to it? We'll talk more about that when we get back from the garage. Kale Gundy, Mark Rogers, and Rick Heath. We'll be right back. Let us help you get on your journey to feeling better and living a more healthy life. Dr. Gumman at Harmony Healing Center is dedicated to providing personalized care to each of his patients. Internationally trained and nationally recognized, with over 24 years of practice, Dr. Gumman is the highest recommended acupuncturist in Oklahoma. Call and schedule your appointment today. Hi friends. Did you know that over 80 million men and women suffer from hair loss? Well, now there's help. Dr. Victoria Johnson and her staff at Laser Light Skin Clinic are introducing a revolutionary laser hair loss treatment called Alma Ted. Alma Ted uses a proprietary laser that will help stop hair loss and promote growth. For more information, give Dr. Victoria Johnson and her staff at Laser Light a call and stop hair loss today. You are the most beautiful creation under the sun. You are going to make Table 14 so happy. And you, you are being taken away. All right. At Neighborhood Jam, you deserve breakfast as beautiful as you. So start the day right with scratch made favorites, morning or midday, every day. Treat yourself to Neighborhood Jam. You're going to taste just as good tomorrow. Oh man, dude, I really wish I could make that. Um, it's National No Pants Day, and that'd be kind of inappropriate. We actually just had gas station sushi, and you just don't want to chance that. We're going to be running tornado drills, like tornado drills all day. I have tickets to see Kenny Rogers. He's what? Tornado drill, tornado drill. Your friends are tired of coming up with excuses. Two Fellows Moving Company, saving friendships since 1996. Wonder Folk Spirits distilled out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Great line of spirits. They have Wonder Folk Gin, Wonder Folk uh, Vodka, and Old Moses uh, Bourbon. All of these are quality products, uh, and they're distilled right here in Oklahoma. So support Oklahoma business. Ask your favorite restaurant or bar to carry Wonder Folk Spirits. Let us help you get on your journey to feeling better and living a more healthy life. Dr. Gumman at Harmony Healing Center is dedicated to providing personalized care to each of his patients. Internationally trained and nationally recognized, with over 24 years of practice, Dr. Gumman is the highest recommended acupuncturist in Oklahoma. Call and schedule your appointment today. Hi friends. Did you know that over 80 million men and women suffer from hair loss? Well, now there's help. Dr. Victoria Johnson and her staff at Laser Light Skin Clinic are introducing a revolutionary laser hair loss treatment called Alma Ted. Alma Ted uses a proprietary laser that will help stop hair loss and promote growth. For more information, give Dr. Victoria Johnson and her staff at Laser Light a call and stop hair loss today. And welcome back. Kale Gundy, Mark Rogers, Ricky from the garage. Best burgers and beer in the metro. There are seven locations throughout the metro, maybe even eight by now. I mean, they grow so fast. The garage, best burgers, best beer. They also have lots of other things on the menu and they have wonderful TVs so you can watch your favorite sporting event. Kale, um, OU's defense, I mean, they've been playing pretty good. But now they have a, we talked about it in the last segment, they have a completely different challenge in front of them. 
if, if, if you're looking at that, how do you set your defense up for, you said, the best Big 12, best running back in the Big 12? Yeah, uh, OSU's playing really good offensively right now. And, and again, you know, Mark's always talked about it. It's just controlling the line of scrimmage. And OSU's been able to control the line of scrimmage, especially in the second half of games. And um, OU's going to have to play consistent. Um, you know, Ollie Gordon likes to break tackles. He likes to make guys miss, and he gets plus yards. Now, and big generally, run, that. running backs can either break tackles or yeah. make guys miss. Yeah, or he get, does or, both. Or get tackled. Or get tackled. Or get tackled. Yeah, that's the third uh, option. So he, he does two of the three as good as anybody right now. Uh, he's just got a good. He's got great pace. He's got good vision. He's just got good feel. And um, you know, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he is a big. He is a big running back. And, he's uh, fast enough to go 70 something yards against Cincinnati. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. So it's going to be a weeks. challenge. They're going to have to get him down on the ground. They're going to have to find a way to get him down the ground to uh, to slow that offense down. And uh, if, if not, OSU's going to have some success. I feel like a mobile quarterback, a guy that can run, like Jason Bean did last week, he didn't have many opportunities, but if you make a mistake, guy gets out of position, then he goes for a touchdown. And so this week, it's pretty vanilla. You got to stop a really good running back. You got a quarterback that can throw the ball, but if you make a, a, them a little bit uncomfortable, then you got a shot. I, I think OU will have a good chance of winning this game, but I'm worried that they, they've got to have personnel out there. And without maybe the two, two of the three best defensive players, uh, Stutzman and Gentry Williams, that'll be a big challenge. It will be. You know, I mean, they 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 put up 601 yards against the Cincinnati defense. You know, and, and they had 315 yards running, and the rest of it by a quarterback that at one time wasn't even the starter. You well, know? And, and Bowman is thrown, I mean, his yards per game is up there in the high 270s, I think. And so he's done a good job, uh, and he can throw it. But if you make him move, it can create potentially turnovers, and it can also get in situations where down a distance so you can get ahead of the chains and then that takes the running game away. Yeah. So th this is not all loss for OU. OU still had a, a good season so far and I think they match up better in this game uh, really than they did against Kansas. Well, you know, right. now OU has been really good against the run, okay, but they haven't faced a running back like Ali Gordon. Now that's going to be the question. Can they, can that, you know, front four, front seven put enough uh, uh, of a fence up to stop him. Well, let, let, let me ask Kale this, is that against Central Florida, there was some deception in the running game, a lot of draws and a lot of pass look and then run. Oklahoma State's not going to do that. No. They're going to hand the ball right off. So you have to, again, they've been good standing up and holding the line of scrimmage. That's what they'll have to do this week. I don't think OSU's going to go into this game and try to fool them. No, it'll be, it's less smoke and mirrors, as we call it. You know, not a lot of window dressing for, for safeties and for linebackers being able to get in their gaps um, because it, just what OSU does, they don't do that. You know, I mean, they're either going to throw it or they're going to hand it off. And there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of people going in motion, not a lot of deception, not a lot of bodies going that way and bodies coming back this way. And that's what we saw the last two weeks. So, um, you know, again, it'll be uh, it's going to be interesting. But 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 again, you know, everybody's known what Ollie Gordon is. Everybody has known what how their offense is, and they still haven't been able to stop yeah, the, the guy. The, the he's tape set, is out, right? Record the, yards. Theoretically, though, Oklahoma should have better players than West Virginia, Kansas, Kansas State on the defensive side of the ball, and Cincinnati for sure. Cincinnati was good statistically against the run. They got a great defensive tackle in Corleone, but Oklahoma should have better players in there and be more equipped yeah. to stop it. And but, the other thing, other yeah, thing, Rick, is I've seen more miss tackles from OU the last couple games that I've seen in the earlier four, first four or five games of the season. Well, yeah, the first part of the year, I mean, they were they were being lauded, lauded for making tackles, you know, and stopping them right then. And, and now they're getting through those tackles and, and they're missing a lot more. So that'll be a key. Uh, and the OU defense, I mean, the health of it is going to be a huge factor also. Hey, we are at the Main Street Garage here in Norman. The garage is metro area wide. They're all over. Find your local garage and come in and fill up with good food and good drink here at the garage. Welcome back, Oklahoma Sports Report. Final segment, Kale Gundy, Mark Rogers, Rick Heath from the garage here in Norman. Kale, what does OU need to do to kind of get their fire back offensively? I think they need to start trying to get the ball down the field. Again, that's the strength of their offense. Their strength is their quarterback. 
uh, and his his ability to get the ball down the field. The receivers, uh, even though they've lost Andrew Anthony, they still got um, they still got Nick Anderson. They still got Jalil Fruit, two guys that can stretch the ball down the field. They got great speed, great size. Uh, then you still got one of the best receivers in in the in the conference for sure, running across the middle in Drake Stoops. So, um, I you know a little bit's kind of what's happened with this. You know, last week is they they're into so many heavy RPO stuff. In RPOs, if there's two high safeties as a quarterback, you're supposed to hand the ball off. If there's one safety, okay, you're supposed to pull it and then throw it. Well, Kansas went into that game and said, hey, we're going to play two high safeties and see if you guys can just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. On the flip side of it, Oh, you needs to go ahead and call some passes and get it get out of that RPO system and just call some passes for a too high sa uh, safety and get, and still be able to get the ball down the field. Oklahoma State's defense, the three five three, is predicated on safeties playing games with the quarterback or the coaching staff. Would OU be better off and giving Dylan Gabriel some more freedom to do? He's played a lot of games, yeah. and a lot of success. Well, it, it's I, I know again, it's Iowa State defense. We went against it for a lot, many many years, and and there's um, you, you almost have to kind of get away with get away from a lot of the things you do. There's we always felt like you got to be able to run the football. I mean, you have to be able to run it, run it, run it, and get those safeties down and be able to take advantage of getting on top. Because there's so many bodies that drop. You know, you got five DBs, you got three linebackers. I mean, there's just bodies everywhere. So, I mean, you've got to be on top of your game, get rid of that ball quick because there's such small windows uh, for a quarterback to throw into. So, again, they're going to have to run the football and then get one of those safeties to come down to be able to go on top of that. In order to uh, run the football, state. though, that offensive line has got to be really good. And I mean, it's been a mixed bag all yeah. year for the offensive line, Kale. Yeah, but it's it's. I always felt like it's a little bit easier versus a, a, a team like this. They're blocking three down guys and two linebackers. Okay, there's not like there's four down guys and two linebackers. So your 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 five have got to block those five, and you can stay on combo blocks a little bit longer. Okay, and uh, they'll do some stuff. They'll do they'll have some schemes. You know, they did it against Iowa State a few weeks ago, and they actually had a good good game plan. Oh, you did. Yeah, and I. Iowa State is a team that's only lost one conference game. That's Oklahoma, so that's a, a, a much better win than we thought, I think, earlier in the season. Um, I think, you know, again, you, you talked about the three down linemen. So is it more having success up the middle than it is on the edge? Because the tackles have had a hard time maybe blocking outside, which they've schemed a lot of running game and re like reverses or with the receivers in the backfield that this week you go right up the middle. Because Oklahoma State's got really good linebackers. Yeah. And maybe not so good interior line. Yeah, you're you're going to see more, I think, inside run, and then you're also also going to see Dylan pull it sometimes, and you're, he's going to have a lead blocker to kind of come out on the back end. Let's talk a little bit about OU's defense against o o Oklahoma State's offense. To me, you mentioned it earlier. You got to make Allen Bowman beat you. You got whatever you got to do to make him beat you. You got to do it because if you let Oklahoma State run the ball the way they've been, it's going to be a long day. Well, they're going to be playing a lot of, of one high safety. They're they're going to, especially with the, the injuries that OSU has in the receivers right now. They had, you know, two of their starters out last week. Uh, one of them's going to be out for sure. There's a chance probably two of them are going to be out again. So they're going to load that box up. Uh, but when you load that box up, then you do put guys on on islands. And if a guy falls down, or you put a double move on him, or he just he doesn't stay up with that one receiver, you give up a big play. Yeah. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. I, I think Oklahoma's not going to have Gentry Williams. It looks like so you're having a backup cornerback there. And then again, the OU safeties, they love the run, don't like the pass. They get sucked up. And what Kale's talking about is you get a guy outside like Johnson last week who's yep. a walk on it but a big receiver he's going to be matched up on a safety safety reads run all of a sudden it's a 60 yard touchdown and Bowman can't make those plays so OU has to play very disciplined especially at the safety position well you know that's one of the things I, I, I jotted down is identify Leon Johnson I mean you know he he wherever he goes you got to find out where he is in perspective now obviously the focus is going to be on Ollie Gordon but you can't as Kale said you can't let Leon Johnson be over there, and as you said, Mark, and, and be isolated on a safety, and all of a sudden the safety bites on a run because they see Ollie fake off, and boom, he's gone yeah. all the way. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. I, I really think it's going to be a good game. Uh, it's going to be great weather. It's going to be 68 degrees and kick off. I mean, how, how many times have we had good weather in the OU and OSU? How game, crazy you know? is it up at Stillwater, Kale? You've been there. Oh, yeah. No, it'll be. 
hey, they're going to be going nuts up there. Uh, I've been up two of their games. I was at the Kansas game and the Kansas State game, and uh, they'll, they'll get after it. It'll be a great atmosphere. I, I, it's going to be a great game, and, and Mark, as you said, it's a chance for OU to come back because it's their season yeah. right there in a nutshell. They get beat again, you're going to talk about a lower tier bowl at best. So uh, right now it's time for them to get I, My prediction is 37-34 OU. You guys don't need to make a prediction. I'll make because, a prediction. I'll make, make, okay, go I'm ahead. I'm afraid of that. I think OU wins 31-24. 31 to a, a little lower scoring. It might be a little lower score. Hey, Kale's not going to make a prediction. No, we're not going to. We're going to not there pretty much. He's going to, hey, Kale Gundy won, Mike, Mike Gundy zero. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week with more of the Oklahoma Sports Report.